When I got out of shape, I don't jump off them, I save them. And I was very good at that, you know. The bike was a pile of shit. We could have fixed it, but they didn't, and we lost because the bike was no good. I, I watched Roger, everything I could see about Roger. In 83, I was the fastest bastard on the track. Ain't no doubt, nobody's gonna argue that. I never won the race in 77 from the gate. And if we all had to be drunk on Saturday night, why not would have won every week? In his first video interview in over 20 years, Bob Hanner explains what it really took to become the champion. The endless days of testing, the travel, the crazy road stories, no friends, the broken bones, and his one true hero. Hear it all for the first time on Bob Hanna, The Big Interview, part two, You've Gotta Have Ego. Season, I, I, I would never get through a season on one of those 450s. I'd be broke in three weeks, you know? Grab a handful and... Outdoors, yeah, I'd love that. Outdoors, I'd try to get some tracks. They only run, like, back in Europe twice a year, or they change the track, or they lay it out 20 feet over here, different, you know, and it's virgin for that race. I think it would be wonderful. You know, it would be wonderful. And the Supercross, I think, that would tame the bikes down. But you don't think the tracks are a real problem? I don't. No. I don't. Hell no. My point is, when they go jump everything on the first lap, you're telling me that it's that difficult? Well, no, they I, practice on these supercross tracks all week long. They go out there, they look at, yeah, it's about the same as ours. And well, I'm, I'm meaning the opposite. The, the track has become so almost boring. It's just cold. In, in the air all the time. Yeah. In the air all the time. It is, it is that. I don't like that. Yeah. I'd make it more of a race, a motocross track indoors. Sure, you can have your mm -hmm. triple over here. Yeah, I would make it more of a race. Yeah. But they're not going to do that. Going, going back to the wrist, the leg, everything else, the hip, you've broken a lot of stuff. A lot of shoulders, yeah. Um, a lot of that, most of that was practicing and not actually in the race, right? I mean, did you do a major injury in the race? A few. I broke uh, a couple ankles and a couple wrists in the race, but most of them were practice. Maybe concentration is not quite up to par, Practicing as much as it would be in the race, I think it's probably more dangerous than the practice. For me, it was probably. Getting yeah. tired, whatever. Uh, I remember a few, I, I broke uh, one wrist and hurt the other one one day and it was just a long day of practicing at Honda and I'm just gonna do another 30 hard minutes. And I got, I must have got, you know, I just screwed up on a downhill. And I probably should have called it a day an hour ago, you know. The so, back to I should have tamed it down. Goes, so it goes to the other question somebody else asked this too was um, you were, I'm assuming you consider yourself to be probably a split if not the fittest guy out there when you got to the start line. Was that, is that the case? In, in my days? Yes. Yes. Because I figured out it, when I came in in 76 and say 76, 77, 78, Maybe by 78 I was, but 76, 77, I wasn't. If you put me in a 250 national in 77, qualifying times, I'm 10th. I'm 10th. Weiner, Tony, Marty, Paul, you name them, they're all ahead of me. But I figured out that they were going to tire out, and at 30 minutes, I can be the fastest guy on the track if I'm going faster at 30 than I was in the beginning, and I could. I learned it, I warmed up, I was ready to go. At 30, I wasn't tired, and they were tired. Yeah. And then I won the race. I never won the race in 77 from the gate because I wasn't as fast as those guys. So, no, I didn't win them then. I got faster. In 83, I was the fastest bastard on the track. Ain't no doubt. Nobody's going to argue that. Yeah. You know, I'm not bragging. Nobody's going to argue that, no. you know. But 77, I wasn't. I probably, I won a lot of races in 77 only by tiring the poor boys out, you know. Well, it doesn't matter how you do it. You no, I learned that I needed to do that, you know. Yeah. Well, Brad said the same thing. He if said, Marty Smith was in the same shape as, if Marty Tripes was in the same shape as I was, God, he'd kill everybody. Yeah. He would make mincemeat out of Marty Smith. <laughs> you can bet your sweet ass. Yeah. Marty Tripes was a talent. 
I wasn't a talent. I came out, I had a big desire, but I wasn't that big a talent. I worked and worked and worked. Now, I had a, fanatic, I had a, I had a good quality to be able to stay on a bike when it's 90% out, out of shape. But I, I think I learned that from my father. He would kick my ass if I fell off of a bike out in the desert when we were learning how to ride. He said, hey, knock it off. Don't drop the bike. Don't fall the bike. Don't ride over your head. So I learned when I got out of shape, I don't jump off them. I save them. And I was very good at that, you know. I'm sure you could tell in those days. They said, man, this guy didn't fall off. He's a nut, but he doesn't fall off. I had a knack for that, yeah. you know, saving it, you know. You ride it on the edge, you get a knack for saving it, or you crash all the time. And you can't win crashing. No. Did, so in being kind of the fittest guy in your, in your mind, at least, you were the fittest guy out there. Was that through purely through riding? I mean, how much off the bike stuff? Bicycles you? running and riding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, you have to say, I'm talking American racing, and we're talking... 77, 78 or something, right? Because if you put me in Europe, I don't say I'm the fittest guy. Those, Roger was fit. He was perfectly fit. Yeah. So people wanted to know why you didn't go to Europe. Why, why you know, if I heard you I, I think they asked me that question a long time ago. I said the food sucks and they don't use deodorant. That, that was the problem in but those days. But you're also afraid. That, you're also afraid uh, plus, they kicked my ass. Why go over there? I'm winning. I'm over here making money. Do I want to? Do you want to go over there and battle with Roger on a 500? I don't think I probably wanted to. Did you? <laughs> would you have done later on? I mean, you know, later. It, it, later on, it would have taken. It would have always taken a lot of money to get me there. You, I said I didn't race for the money, but it's going to say, going to take me away from the United States. It's going to take money. Yeah. I'll do it if you got enough money. But once you got the cut, once you got the, cut, the world championship, didn't mean anything to me. F f for some reason, no. it didn't mean anything. I would. I love the races I did over there with Roger and those guys in the trophy races. They were fun and they were good. But to go over there and stay in Europe out of, you know, you don't speak the language, the food, the whole driving, the whole deal. I just said, man, I don't dig that. I don't think many of us did. Exactly. Lackey went over. Yeah. You know, Lackey went over. He knew he'd make a name over there. Maybe he liked it over there. Yeah. You know, some people went over there later out of necessity. Lackey didn't go out of necessity. Lackey went to win. Palmer, he went to win. Later, guys went over there out of necessity. They'd maybe not win here, but they could win there. That's a different story. And I didn't want to be over there either way. Yeah. Um, if, if, well, let, let, me, no, let me go on to another kind of questions. What kind of questions are going to piss me off? Well, no, no. We don't have, are we already uh, through those? No, no. No, actually, one guy said... <laughs> he says he's got questions that are going to piss me off. No, yeah, one guy said... Me. Said, piss me off. It can't happen. Can't happen. Right? So, so somebody said, did you really cry in the woods for 30 minutes after you cut all that frog? I went out in the woods. I, I, I might have shed a tear out there. I was pissed that day. I can't tell you. I don't remember. But I guess I was gone for a while. Yeah, I just rode out. I was furious. One of the worst days of your racing career? Certainly, one of them. Yeah. I didn't like, I didn't like those games. I, I'm loyal to the company I ride with to a fault. But I didn't like doing it. That was a stupid way they did it. Yeah. I never said shit before that race because they didn't think I could beat them that track that day, I guess. Yeah. Bad mistake, you know. But they should have more brains... I've pulled off, I think, three times now, you know, two times for Honda, too. And uh, so I don't mind doing it, but just have a little planning, huh? Yeah. So, uh, well, and uh, I'm letting a guy, I'm taking a championship from a guy I really like. Yeah. Giving it to somebody I don't really care for, and the whole thing pissed me off, you know. It's just it's ugly. Everybody thought it was an ugly deal, you know. Okay. Have some planning. You know, plan, I let Bailey buy in, in uh, for the Grand National Championship deal in uh, Minnesota. You know, they asked me. I said, I ran in pretty hard. I ran to the last lap, but I did it in the back. And uh, just plan it, you know, so everybody's on board. Yeah. Don't yeah, come out with a board and go, okay, dummy. <laughs> hey, you can't do this. <laughs> you know, it was a bad deal for all of us. 
Everybody. They didn't even spell Brock's name right. That one, McCarty was in a panic. He said Brock by B Y E. And poor old McCarty said, What? <laughs> what do you don't want him to win? Come on. Well, that was that was kind of a weird year all around, though. I mean, that was. Yeah, our, Brock, or I, Brock or I would have won that championship easy. Yeah. I could have won that championship easy. My bikes are, were bad that year. You asked about the year. That was only a year after 77. And the linkages came flat. The bike was a pile of shit. We could have fixed it, but they didn't, and we lost because the bike was no good. But it was also an air cool cylinder on a water cool box, man, because you had the problem with the transmission. We had out. lots of problems with that bike. That bike broke down, and I should have won that series hands down. Easy. Yeah. And Brock would have beat Danny easy, too, if the bike was good. Yeah. How good a ride was Danny? Danny's a fantastic rider. Denny is kind of like, uh, if you look back, you know, Bailey turned into a fantastic rider. When Bailey got hurt, he was the best in the world. He would have been the best in the world that year, for sure. He would have kicked Johnson's ass because he finally got his head where it should be. Where I'm going to kick his ass. I know I can. I'm going to do it. Bailey learned everything from nothing. His dad, videos, stealing ideas, very smart. Danny came out of the desert like me. Danny was a natural, like, uh, you would like to put him up with somebody like Tripes. If Danny would have had my motivation in those days, he would have lots of championships. Very good rider. Mm -hmm. Technically, like Roger. Yeah. And I'm sure he, he, he watched Roger and he's smart enough to learn from Roger too. But technically, like Roger, very good. But uh, not as highly motivated as some would hope. He's a good guy, nice guy, but he didn't have the blinders on, that's for damn sure. Yeah, I asked, I asked Roger, what was, what was the difference between the guys that really made it and the guys that didn't quite make it, that you thought were going to make it, but didn't make it? And he said, all of them didn't listen. They wouldn't accept that they weren't perfect. And I see a lot of that. <laughs> did you ever think you were, did you always think you were imperfect? Or did you think you were, did you ever go through a period? Oh, no, I don't think I thought I was perfect. I always wanted to learn. I stole all my I stole all my crap too. I came out of the desert. I had a lot of experience on a motorcycle, but I didn't know what a berm was the first day I went to a motocross race. They say, "Oh, they hit the berm." I go, "What's a berm?" They thought I'm joking. So I I learned, but I stole shit from everybody. I remember seeing a, a more amateuristic guy on the track with us at the national, and I saw him do something. He couldn't hold a candle to me on his best day. But I went, whoa, that's a hell of an idea. I, I, if I, when I start thinking back, I saw Stackable do something in the mud. I go, wow, genius. You know, and I go, I remember that. I, I copied, I, I watched Roger, everything I could see about Roger. You know, I knew he was the best and I knew there was a damn good reason for it. You know, I'm not stupid to go, ah, Roger, Roger, Roger. Bullshit, Roger was the finest. <laughs> He's a professor. He's a fucking professor. He still did. In 83, we were at Honda Land, which is a supercross track Honda owned out in the desert. Johnny there, Bailey there, I'm there, and Roger's riding the bike. He's riding one of the works bikes. I don't know, just playing, testing something with us. And I go, watch this jackass come off that hill. And I go, watch what he does down in this berm. And we're all up on the front of the bike going into the berm like this. And we come out, we're spinning, and we're trying to get traction. And Roger is a funky deal, and I never did like it, and I didn't learn it. But he would go in there. He, would be, he, he sits down at the last possible second, which is beautiful. He lets the bike work. He sits down way up on it. And then when he wants to get traction, he doesn't slide his ass. He bends his back. And I don't dig it at all. I, it's a uncomfortable and un... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's just something you don't want to do. I bend this way, but I don't bend that way. And I go, watch him get traction out of that corner. And O'Mara and Bailey were just going, wow, he's something in there. And I go, yeah, he's something. <laughs> he's something. Don't ever think he's not. 
How ice, I don't know how old he was that day, but he could still ride the crap out of one in 83. You know, and he has, he has a lot of tricks that, the, that they can learn, you know. But you need to steal it from everybody. Nobody, no one guy knows all of them. You know? you know, who's the first guy to hit the brake and bring the front wheel down? Hey, that works pretty good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, everybody learns it from that guy, whoever he was. I don't know. Well, the, the story is that it was Omar and Bailey accidentally picking it out on the one day. They just, they just... Because you know, well, we're always out there playing, jumping, and, and wanting to land on the other side, and we tap it. And probably, could it be. Johnny and Bailey were both excellent at that, you know, once they got into it. Yeah, Omar went up apparently and was kind of starting to go over backwards. And he panicked and hit the brake, and he was like, oh, because he thought he was going over the top. Hit the brake, and David was just watching him, and he watched the bike do that. And went, oh, shit. And so they kind of worked at it. And, yeah. yeah. And then we all steal it. Commonplace. Now, no, nobody even thinks twice. You know, they. Oh, that's what you do. Well, David also talked about one of the things, one of the biggest things for him, at least, was moving the foot pegs back five millimeters more than. And Roger said, "No, that's wrong." And David said, "No, let's move them back." And they moved them back five millimeters. And he said, "That so that let me get over the handlebars more, and I could just I could." Get Who was that? Me. That was Bailey. Bailey. And he said, I could just get... Well, because he's taller than the rest but of us, you, too. But I was going to say, you always rode kind of in that forward over the bars position anyway. And you were kind of a... But a lot of guys in that era didn't lean as far forward as you did, so... You know. Even in a jump, I like to be over, I like to be over the front. Yeah. Yeah, any time. Uh, up here. Yeah. I can move back, but I want to be up there. Even when I came from bicycle racing, too. Yeah, I raced bicycles before that, and I saw a guy a video of a guy jumping the other day, and I just cringed. I went, "Oh God, that's not that's going to end bad, badly," because he's back on a bicycle. And I go, "Yeah, this should never be back there. He should be up over the bars," you know. Why? Why do you think so many guys came from California? Just made it big. What was what was the reason? He, good weather out here, riding. In, poor Pennsylvania guys are riding in the snow. They ride twelve months a year out here. It'd be my first guess, you know. Just we time. rode all the time. Seat time. Yeah. So the other thing too, obviously, was you know. The and competition. The competition was out here. Way more riders here. Way better riders here. You go to a CMC race in '75. Hey, all that <laughs> rest. I mean, everybody's there. Yeah. A CMC race was like a national. Yeah. And then and in Florida and uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, you know, you got one guy, but you don't have a national. And CMC at Saddleback was a national yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. So you, got, you get better. That's there are a lot of good guys here. The 125 class in 72, 3, 4, 5, they had fantastic riders down there. Yeah. That's one of the reasons Pomeroy kind of came down from, from the north. Exactly. And Marty Smith and Croft were just a notch better. There were a million good riders, really good riders in the 125 class. And then there's Croft, who's certainly second, and Marty. You know, Croft never beat Marty. I maybe, I don't know if he could or just didn't care or didn't think he should. I don't know. But he was a second place rider. But way better than third. You know? And Marty, the best. How old were you, how old were you when you started... You know, when you got the factory ride with the MRI, how old were you then? In uh, November 76, 20. Yeah. So Marty you know, Smith and, and, and Tony D and I are all were like a month apart. Yeah. But Marty had been riding. Marty had way more experience on track. Been, way, way he'd more. He'd been racing three years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just, I never raced a bike until uh, July of 74. And then I went to Indian Dunes and I raced the first time there. So you were kind of the overnight miracle boy. Yeah, I got, on, I got on it. I was fairly fast to get a factory ride. When I first got that factory ride, I thought I'd be fired. You know, I said, I had no way I can ride with these guys. Yeah. I knew I'd be fired in one year, you know. What was, what was the scariest moment on a bike? The scariest? The scariest. Can you remember it? Kind of like, uh, oh, it's open shit. Oh. No, because it all happens so fast. Even when you get hurt, it's not scary. It just... I don't think, uh, 
scariest time I had on a motorcycle was running from the police on a road bike. <laughs> I used to do it, and that's scarier because <laughs> you're, you're worried about getting caught. <laughs> But not on a motocross bike, it's really not scary. There must have been a few moments like that when you were in rental cars. Rental yes. Cars. Well, we ran from the cops in the rental cars, too. And, and, and one time in Texas, I ran. The car didn't have enough horsepower, and we were pissed off, and the cop just ran us down because I didn't have any horsepower, and it took me to jail in Dallas. I gave up. I finally gave up. I said, we, I go to the guy in the race. Yeah, I go, we don't have a horsepower, man. We can't, we can't outrun this guy. We tried like hell. Stop we were just hauling ass. We were doing 85 and a 35 going to breakfast. And I see the cop. I go, oh, we can outrun him. And so we, had, we tried to outrun him. And I said, this car's a pile, you know. I don't have any power. Everybody has a rental car story, right? Oh, we had a lot of them then. And, uh, yeah, we t it was terrifying every day in the cars there. It was, it was bad in those days. In the end of the 70s, everybody was bad. Yeah. Really bad. Nobody got Worse hurt. than you can imagine. Yeah. Nobody got hurt, but it was close sometimes, right? Oh, we had races at night in Florida in the Florida series down there that we, the t Danny with a Porter was out there, Brigitte out there. I remember five cars came out there, and four of them didn't even go home. We're racing, seeing who could go across the lake, get back 80 mile an hour, and see who had the gall to get out further and, and hydroplane, you know? And see, each guy would go, oh, I'll go a little further. You know, it was bad. Do you think it's a lot different now? Oh, yes. It got better when you were, during your period, though, right, I guess? Okay. Yeah, I've always, I don't know, every time I ever buckled into a rental car through ever, my career, when I get into it, it's like, you know, I didn't drive my own like that, but I got in it, and I drive it. I drove them fast always, and we flogged them pretty good in the 70s. I don't know how, I don't remember. It mellowed out, it mellowed out, but slowly. 70s was bad though. Yeah. All the guys. Do you consider, do you consider your racing career a success? Was it, was the whole thing, thing? was it the whole thing? Yeah, because hindsight's everything, like I said. So what I did, I'm not, I'm not gonna bitch. What made me was a nasty attitude to, to want it bad and to and keep me driven. And that's the same thing that actually hurt me in some senses, you know, like I said in the 80s. You know, I should have known to bag it. I wish I'd have had some outside people saying, uh, even Roger, I don't even remember Roger saying, you know, give it, give it a break, man. I wish somebody would have set me down and said, man, when you get too tired, let's call it a day. Let's train so much. Let's don't get too good. I just had binders. I just wanted to beat them by a minute. I wanted to lap them. In, in 83, I just wanted to. It's a bad deal. Other than that, I don't have a gripe. But that's like David. It, it, I say anybody that walks out of this sport on two legs is a lucky bastard. That's what I say. If you break your leg, shut the hell up. I broke wrists, multiple pelvis, legs, shoulder, everything. Shut the hell up. Because David has one little bitty shit ass crash. A little bitty. Not even going. A local race. In practice. A, just a little click. It's like falling in the bathtub. So I say, me, I've crashed my brains out so many times, and I'm still walking. So anybody that walks out, don't feel sorry for yourself. You made a million, you made 100,000, you made 10 million, shut the hell up, is my opinion. Yeah. You're walking, because you shouldn't be, because all those super cross of shit, <laughs> you're taking a big risk. And I don't think anybody thinks about it enough. They've taken a big risk. You have to understand that. It's there every day you ride. And so if you do get through, you're lucky. Yeah. And consider yourself lucky. Don't go, oh, man, I could have won 10 championships. I could have won 80 races. Who gives a shit, really? In the end, it's whatever you did to satisfy yourself and the money you put in the bank it really is only in, in the end. 
you know it was it was good money and you wanted to be good and if you got to be good hey it worked out it worked out good but if you got six championships or five or or eight does it really matter? Daytona, I, I was leading. I should have won that thing three, three more times than I did. Super easy. Stupid little things happen. Does it really matter now? I, th I used to think it was God, God wanting to kill me. What was he torturing me? But I thought God was torturing me in, in some points. I go, what the hell did I do? You know, I think back, I go, I really thought it. I go, what the hell have I done to deserve this shit? I train harder than anybody, these bastards, and, I, and I'm here with a cast on. You know, I wondered, what in the hell? When you broke your leg, did you ever doubt that you would come back? And no. It was always, there was never a moment. No. Yeah, I was young, really. Some guys might have, I, well, because of your attitude, I guess. But some guys might at that point have gone, eh, you know. There's a lot of guys that go, eh. It's why they don't, it's why. There's a lot of talented guys out there that never made it. Like, I think you said, you asked Roger, and he said, some of them don't listen. They might not listen. You're right. I know a lot. I can picture that in a guy. But I don't know if that's the biggest reason other than lazy, worthless people. In general, yeah. I don't care if you're selling airplanes for me or working on a land deal or whatever. I like motivated people, and I just can't stand the lazy shit. And a, a lazy motorcycle rider, or that doesn't work. Yeah. You know, they give all these kids, they bring these kids up. <laughs> a lot of kids get stuff too early, and they shouldn't yeah, it's because it ruins you. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot different today than, than it was in your day. Guys have got factory rides when they're 14 and they're, you know, all this kind of crap. Is, you think that's kind of productive in the long run? Yeah. Yep. They get spoiled. They, it comes too easy in the beginning. For, this is not the greatest example, but I think Lachine would tell you. Lachine was a fantastic rider. Fantastic. But... He had too many, too many things pulling at him. He wants to be surfing, or he wants to be doing something else. And uh, if he would have had binders, uh, blinders on, my God. He knows it now. But shit, how do you explain a guy like that when he's 18 or 20? You can't. If he can't see it, I can't tell you. I can't make you a good writer, or I can't make you successful. You either have it or you don't. You can't make somebody else successful. Do you... Are you actively helping any riders to become successful these days? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I haven't talked motocross like this, and and I don't know how many years. <laughs> when was? But you did at some point after the end of your career. You must yeah, been. yeah. And, until '96, or you know, even with Yamaha and Bradshaw, and mm -hmm. you know, trying, trying to help guys. But I don't. I don't. I don't really know that you can. No. no, if a guy doesn't take a certain takes a certain guy to have somebody hang around with him and coach him and and really take stuff from him. Maybe they're maybe they're round, but so they if you don't have it, you don't have heart. You don't have shit. You, you gotta have ego. You gotta have a want, and you gotta have a big fucking heart. What wins the race in the end, not the money. You want to win. I've seen these guys, uh, they thought about the money more than me. But you have to have some desire to be, yeah, I want to be rich. I told you, I looked at Roger and I wanted to be Roger. But in the middle of the race at 35 minutes and you're tired, the money thing goes out the wall. It goes out the trash. You go, okay, I got, it. You know, I got enough money. I'm tired. I don't want to win. The ego, I've won enough races. I don't want to be the hero today. It's heart, and you go, I am sick and tired. I've been in a race where I've got past, I'm out front, and I'm in second, and I go, what the F? I train all week long, all month long. I race motorcycles for a living. I'm going to let this son of a bitch beat me? I go, no, and go back. And that's heart. That's not anything but that. that nothing. If you don't have that, you're worthless. You really are. So, 
Money won't drive you. I'll give you $100 million to race this motorcycle. Not gonna, he has no heart. He won't ever win. He has to have talent. We all have to have some sort of talent to get out there. But then you have to work with it. What time? You, are you good? We're good? You've got to have the talent. You've got to have some sort of base talent, right? Yeah. Then you got to have, we all have ego. Every ride ever rode one has ego. He wants to win. Everybody, I used to say, everybody on the starting line on Sunday morning wants to win. I've heard, I've heard, <laughs> I heard Galen Mosher tell his mechanic one day sitting right next to me, he goes, Monday morning, I'm going to start training. We're, we're going to win some of these. I go, what the F have you been doing for six months? I'm winning today because I was training in October, Mac. I didn't train last week to win today. I trained three months to win today. I trained three months ago to win today. This dumbass is thinking on the start line. He realizes we all want to win. And he's thinking, I'm going to start training. No shit? Now? <laughs> I, thought, I looked at him, and I'm talking to McCarty. I'm going, what? This guy's out of his flipping mind. He's going to start training Monday, he says. <laughs> what the fuck for next year? You know, I just cracked up. McCarty and I were going, oh, my God. I just cracked up when I heard that. I go, that tells me something about these jackasses. That's why I can beat them. I'm going to start training Monday. I'm, I really want to win one of them. No shit. Is it, is it possible to overtrain? I mean, can you be yes. Too I don't think a lot of guys do, but I think, yes, if you get too crazy. I, you know, if I had to look back, I'd say, if I was giving a guy advice, a super cross rider right now, I'd say, never jump a jump. You don't have to jump to win. Never win more than three seconds. Why? Why take the chance? I jumped a jump I didn't have to jump to win. I had no business jumping it. Nobody ever jumped it in the race, broken wrist. I go, why did I do that? Because I was getting pushed from the mechanic to, okay, we can do this. We'll win. We'll, it'll be better. We'll win. You do that, nobody can catch you, you know? And I go, okay. Yeah, you can be stupid. You can't be stupid and win. <laughs> you don't want to be stupid. It's a bad habit. <laughs> the bad trait being stupid. You can't fix it, you know? So, some quick short answers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the writer's name. Just like. God, now we're gonna get in trouble. Yeah, now we're gonna get in trouble. So, as short as he wanted to be, Glover. <laughs> I don't have a short answer for Glover. <laughs> Glover and I just didn't mesh. But Glover was a great, good writer, hard trainer, dedicated devoted, no doubt. We didn't get along that good, but devoted motocrosser, yeah. Did you get on even worse after the left rock bike? <laughs> no. No, we just never meshed that good, yeah. but he was a devo I'll give him credit. He's a devoted, and he had his act together, you know. All right, so we're getting worse at Howerton. Same, same guy. I used to go to Howerton's house, so Howerton was a good guy, too. It, later, we got in a little... Well, if you look at that whole thing, when I win and win and win and win and I'm gone and he wins that year and everybody's saying, if Hannah wasn't here, you wouldn't win. If you get that jammed in your throat enough, we're not ever going to get along again. And the guys that said that to him were damn right. Yeah. If I was there, he wouldn't have won. <laughs> That's a fact. But when he got the big jump on me, it took a while. Where, where, where the hell was he in 83? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 82 maybe he was. Where was he in 83? I used to go, where's Howard then? Okay, yeah, we got along fine. I told you, when you're fighting like that, nope, not too many people get along. How can you? Yeah. I was lucky enough to be at Saddleback when you and he went out there. You were on the Yamaha and you were going up the uphill. And probably, probably one of the hardest races I ever rode, especially on the edge of control. Yeah. If you watch a video of that, how I didn't fall off of that bike. It was amazing. Yeah. I look at it and go, oh, oh, crap. You know, I look at how many. I remember some of it going, wow. I, but, I mean, just on the edge, falling and fixing it and going, Whew. it was lucky. It was lucky for me <laughs> that I stayed on it. But how it pushed you to that, to that limit. So that was, yeah. If he would have left me alone that day in practice, we'd have, I would have never beat him that day. He, would, he doesn't know that or not smart enough to figure that out. 
He's saying he's a fucking angel in that deal, but that's not that's bullshit. He he knew he had a better bike. He knew he was riding better, and he kept. But oh, he wants to push me around when there's no reason, and he just he pissed off, poked the fucking tiger. He wouldn't have poked the tiger. The tiger was dead, man. I wasn't back yet. He shouldn't have poked him. Here's a bad deal for him that they poking me. Marty Smith. Great California writer. Probably again not not as uh, more like Lachine. Too many things pulling the, to want to play around more than do his job, you know. Marty tribes. Fantastic. A, a lot of a lot of them to me come into the same deal. Fantastic natural ability, probably like Joel Joel Robert. Just very hard for him to keep the binders on, keep the blinders. And a lot of things, his friends and things pulling at him. Rather than, one good thing that I had, I never had a chance to get into a real person's life. Like, camera here was, they went to Vegas for a New Year's Eve party. I've never been to a New Year's Eve party. I told them, I think I've only been up one time in my life at, new, at the new year, once. The other night, fireworks woke me up at, at midnight. I was pissed off. I wonder, what the, what's this noise? <laughs> I go, what's this noise? And I go, oh, yeah, it's a new year. Oh, yeah. I go, but I never had that dragging. I never had that pulling on me. And, and Tripes probably had, you know, he kind of liked to be up playing around, partying a little bit, or hanging with his buddies rather than training, and, and that kind of hurt him. But talent-wise, on the same day, if none of us were allowed to ride, none of us were allowed to train, run, or practice, Tripes would have beat us every week. Every week. And probably uh, Weinert would have probably got second. And if we all had to be drunk on Saturday night, Weinert would have won every week. Fantastic. That's the truth. Yeah. Well, I think was the next one on the list. Weiner, fantastic writer. Again, you can't do everything. The, in the Rocky movie, they said once the Rocky got sophisticated, that was the end of him. Same with the motocrosser. Motocrosser's good when he first comes up. He comes out from under a rock. He likes winning races. He wins races. It's simple. I just want to win the race. It's really not, I'm not going to get rich. I want to win the race. He gets sophisticated. He wants to fly his plane to the race, drive his Porsche during the week rather than train. It hurts you. It, you're better off like Mark Barnett, fantastic writer, had nothing pulling at him. He goes to grandma. I wanted to strangle his grandma because he'd go to grandma's house. She'd cook for him. He'd train all day long, sleep all night. The grandma would take care of him. I said, I said, we had to put a hit on his grandmother because... He's killing us because he had nothing tugging him. He'd go hide in Alabama and just burn gas. Fantastic. You know? And he had another little party and pulling at him. Nobody wanted to drive a Porsche. He drove a truck. No outside pulling, you know? That's really, if you want to be good, no outside life. It's not fun. The only fun it is is whipping their ass on the weekend. That's the only fun you're going to get out of it's work. You really? I never had, I hadn't had weekends for 20 years in my life. People go, what did you do? I never had a life. They don't pull at me. I have a way better life now. I fly my own friggin' plane down here. I go where I want. I do what I want to do. I love it. I don't have to run. I, I, I ride a trainer or a bicycle four days a week because I like it. I lift my weights three days a week, but I do what the F I want. In the old days, I went to training because I had to, you know? So when, you, when you finally quit racing, did, did P51s fill a hole? I mean, was that... Oh, was yeah, I loved that. Yeah. Was it different or was it... Oh, no, 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 no. It's not the same as riding a motorcycle. It's a challenge. It's another. Cha it's a different challenge. Yeah. You know, that that wake your ass up. That kind of scare you. That those can scare you. You know. Yeah. But yeah, that's a different deal. But it's it's still racing. But it's not the same. I just like flying the plane. I didn't give a shit about winning the race really. I like flying it. I don't like any of the bullshit politics around the racing, but the flying of the airplane fast, I liked. And to master the plane, kind of. Do you 
you do that still? Yeah, we fly all sorts. We fly all sorts of crap. I don't race planes yeah, anymore, but it. we fly everything because we buy and sell them. I fly. I fly a lot now. You know, I fly. Well, I should say a lot. You know, probably three hundred hours a year, or something. You know, two hundred fifty hours a year. So I fly a lot. I fly quite a few days a week. You know. How fast was the fastest P fifty one you flew? What's kind of, what kind of speed? Was oh, right at five hundred. Yeah. 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 Well, the racer one that was a full race plane, they're way different airplane, is very fast. What, what was your favorite race car? Over here, for sure. In his day, it was fantastic, right? Yeah. What was, but over there? Europe. In Europe? Yeah. Oh, every track I ever rode over there was good. Yeah. Yeah, in, in, the, in the late 70s over there, the, every tracks were fantastic. It don't matter in Holland or German or Belgium or Switzerland, they're totally different. Fantastic natural stuff, just crazy, which, way which better was, than here. Which was the worst track you ever remember? What's the thing you always got out? Oh, LA Coliseum, probably something like that, you know, just yeah. hard packed crap. But like Saddleback and places like that, you always. No, I don't mind Saddleback. Uh, you know, I didn't like Carlsbad at first. When I never went there, I didn't like it. And then later years, I started testing it a lot, and I learned how to ride it, and I appreciated the cars a bit. You rode it like a road racer. And once you did that, you could be really fast there. That's why the local guys, that's Marty Motes won the GP, because he knew that I mean, he could ride that track. And, uh, but if you were a fresh guy at Carlsbad, like you haven't been there in your life, oh, my God, that's a tough track to ride. I mean, hard, pan, blue groove, you get out of the groove, and it. You rode a blue groove like a road bike, you know. It's pretty cool, actually, once you learned it. All right. Bob, I'm always for time. That was a big Thanks for watching this two-part Hannah interview. Don't forget to subscribe because there are lots more interviews coming soon. Now go over to www.motocrossthegoldenera.com. Take a look at the coffee table book and lots of interesting stories about the era we all 